Okay, so we are going to be retouching my hair today. I'm not going to do a tutorial or anything like that, but I do have previous videos like over a year ago, I think, where I actually showed most of the process. Um, but there is a lot of regrowth happening. I'm going to do this in many different parts. The red side, I'm going to try something new. I'm going to try this, which people say you don't need bleach for because it's supposed to help lighten and deposit the red. So we're going to try that out and see how it goes. And on this side, I'm just going to go in with straight bleach, which is the way I usually do it. And I'm going to go in with volume 50 as opposed to 30 or 40. I don't recommend doing this unless you are going to be on top of your shit because the higher the volume, the quicker things can happen and bleach is caustic, meaning it can burn you. So you definitely want to exercise caution. I also am going to be cutting my hair. Eclipse season is telling me I need to let go a lot of old stuff. And right now, like my hair is very long and I love long hair, but it also has like no layers anymore. So I'm thinking, and like my bangs are like completely underneath right now, but I'm thinking I'm going to give myself layers and cut off a good chunk. I'm also going to be using that in spell work because why would we waste anything when we're witches? And that's the plan. I wanted to show you guys how stylish doing your hair at home can be. Uh, so I have bleach on that half of my head, nothing on this half. Um, bleach is gonna stay on my head for a minute and I don't know how long I'm gonna wanna leave this on so I didn't want to like screw myself over by adding this early. Having to wash it out and this side not being developed enough. My hair is not black but when it comes out of my head, <laughs> I'll explain this, I'll explain this, I promise. When it first comes out of my head, it looks so dark brown, it could almost be black. But if I was to fully just rock my natural hair, it would become lighter towards the end. So my natural hair color is like, starts really dark and then it gets to like a medium brown. And if I'm in the sun a lot, it gets like little streaks of like gold, I guess. But even though it naturally lightens as it comes out, when it first, like the regrowth part is so dark, it takes a really long time with the bleach just to get it to like a yellow color and not a cute yellow color. So that's another reason why I use the 50 because I want it to work faster and my application's pretty fast. So I'm not worried about like one side developing before I can get to the front or whatever. This is what we're looking like right now. It looks like we are almost there. I just reapplied some more because it needs to stay wet or it stops working. Um, another thing too is that it always looks, oh, and hit that spot right there. I'm mixing this red and it's so clumpy and I've already been mixing it for a while. So at the very least, this is annoying and it smells pretty strong, but the color looks beautiful. And I'm mixing this before I rinse out the bleach because I figured I could leave the bleach on for a little bit more. So my hair is almost completely dry, but right now I was sanitizing um, the cups that we use for cupping therapy here at the house. So we first have to wash them with soap and water. Then we dunk them in this sanitizing solution. And I'm gonna put a lid on this in a little bit. Second bucket, I'm getting filled up. So my hair is fully dry now, and I'm actually going to cut it because it seems kind of stupid to add all this hair dye to hair that's just gonna be cut. It's like gonna be wasting my dye. So I'm gonna cut it now, but I'm gonna do it in a specific way because I'm gonna collect it and use it for later. Uh -huh. to get rid of the length. Is that it? Oh my gosh, look. It's crazy, I'm nervous. Gorgeous thing. Oh my god, it feels so good. Okay. So alcohol is actually really good to remove the semi-permanent 
super pigmented, so it stains like crazy. As you can see, this type of shit takes all day. <laughs> um, I added the red already. I decided to lighten that front piece. We'll see how it comes out. And I had to separate and section off. So this is it completely washed out. The red came out really good. It's slightly darker than the bottom, but barely. And it looks like a shadow root, so I'm digging that. This side is perfect. Didn't expect anything other than that. So I finished curling my hair. And I love the way that this looks. I really do. I will be getting ready to go to the gym. Red Bull. I actually love the way that Red Bull tastes. Like, the flavor, I love it. Some people fucking hate it, but I fucking love it. And I'm going to cut my sister's hair, and then I'm going to do my makeup, and then we'll see where we're at. We're going to make my intro workout drink. I have my shaker cup with nothing but water in it. I'm going to be adding some L-citrulline for the pumps, and then some BCAs or branch chain amino acids. Acids. Yeah, that's all being recorded. <laughs> so branch chain amino acids for um, <laughs> recovery. Um, and then also some creatine. I'm just going to do a scoop of each, put it in here, shake it up, and then that's what I'm going to be sipping on. <laughs> Meanwhile, um, I'm working out. But this is the typical noises you hear in my house. It's a very busy, happy, <laughs> loud house. Dear Lord. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, you got me good. Look how short my hair looks. This was literally the only exercise that I recorded through the entire workout session. And I didn't plan it to happen that way, but it just did. And this has to do with the fact that I'm still a little bit reserved when it comes to recording myself in public, even though sometimes it seems like I'm doing it freely it's still not something that I have fully been able to master, but I wanna be able to just pull out my phone or a camera and not give a fuck. So this is why I do this. <laughs> I'm in my garage at home doing the cool down of my cardio because gym closed at eight and there just wasn't gonna be enough time to do my 20 minutes. So instead of getting home and eating like I wanted to, I got on my treadmill and I said, it's only fucking 20 minutes, that ain't shit. And now I'm cooling down. And I feel like I would have made a lot bigger deal out of this before. I feel like I would have said, no, I deserve to eat and had kind of like a tantrum. And then not done my cardio and felt bad about it later. And then started to lose the confidence that I've gained because I've been keeping my word to myself in the process. So I'm not saying that everybody has to do everything that I'm doing. I just want to document how things are going for me as I'm doing them for myself and also for others because I know that there's going to be a time where things are going to be way better, but also maybe a time where things take a dip. And I think it's important to show, even though we all know, that progress and doing these types of things, it's not linear and sometimes it's definitely not cute. I'm going to change. And then I'll go into the kitchen and make my intro workout drink, um, which is what I'll be sipping on while I'm working out. And that helps me um, stay hydrated, most importantly, not only because it's water, but because it's going to also contain electrolytes. Today we are hitting upper body. I don't always start with a bench. I don't always start with anything specific. It just really depends what I'm trying to hit that day. For example, if I am trying to make the bench press the heaviest movement that day, then I will warm up with a lat pull down because it'll warm up my back, which really helps me in the bench press. 
But if, for example, like on this day, I'm going to be hitting shoulders as part of the main muscle that I'm hitting for the upper body day, I like to start with bench because I feel like it's a good way for me to warm up my shoulders. One thing I did not record here, though, is my shoulder press. I did do a seated dumbbell shoulder press. But like I've said before, I don't always get every single exercise. I'm just trying to get into the habit of recording and become comfortable recording myself. Not just recording myself and seeing myself doing these exercises, but also in a public space. And once again, that gorgeous model ass bitch next to me <laughs> is my baby sister. Uh, we're only about not even a full two years apart. But yeah, she likes coming to work out with me. She likes following whatever the hell I have prescribed for that day. Good morning. <laughs> so I am just pulling some cards. This is my new reading area here. It's where I used to have my big altar and I moved that. Um, and this is something that I find really calming to do. And a lot of the times I just pull cards to see if there's anything that's just going to make something click. And today I pulled from the Fairy Wisdom Oracle deck. I hadn't pulled from this deck in so long. And that Magic Market Fair that we're going to be doing with um, with Zedin, which is the name of my sister's and I's business, the theme is Whimsical Fae. And it made me want to just really dive back into my Fae decks. This one I've had for, I want to say at least four years. And there was a time where I was using this deck every single day. I absolutely love this deck because it's so sweet and wholesome and it's not heavy at all. So it's something you can pull on every day, you know, because not every day, especially if you're living a stressful life or you have so many other things going on, every day should not be a day for shadow work. <laughs> That's too damn much. Um, I just pulled five cards which can seem a bit excessive for Oracle if you're reading from the book because each uh, card comes with like this entire entry and then it'll give you like suggestions, theme for the card, a little like story about the card. It even gives you um, a little chant and then like a little action at the bottom. And I don't know, it's just so cute. And even though I pulled five cards, all of those cards go well within the theme of today. Today, my friend's coming over and we're going to be doing a, a soul retrieval workshop. And the theme of the cards today was basically telling me to love on myself, to remember that I'm loved by the elementals, my spirit allies, basically, um, to surrender, not try to control everything, to be more gentle with myself. I mean, there is going to be healing work being done today, so that makes sense too. And also today, I will not be doing any cardio. I will not be doing any lifting. I planned it like that already. So I feel like I'm in alignment <laughs> with the messages that came through. And that always feels beautiful because that's not always the case. I don't always pull cards in the morning, but I have been feeling like it lately. And I really get into pulling a lot of cards at night. That's when I like to do that. And if I'm doing any readings that day, I like to do those at night as well. That's when I just feel the best to read. Um, that's also when I like to do my spell work and ritual. It's just something that I've been doing forever. Of course, if I have to do something during the day, then I'll do it. But also like having the schedule that I had for the past however many years, everything just lended itself to be either really early in the morning or really late at night. LFA 40 or a quarter inch okay. by an eighth. Okay. Yeah, because the copper wiring is a quarter inch. This looks exactly the same size. So that clip that you just saw was my sister and I at Home Depot picking up um, needle valves, which 
are these things. And this is something that we need in order to fully build our percolator. Now this right here is what the end product would look like. Well, sort of, this one's came out wrong, so we have to redo it. But we already have another one, it's just in storage. We needed to create an additional two, well, that's what the plan is. We might create a third one on top of that, just because we are going to be now um, in production for making tinctures. So percolating is the method that we like to use. So it requires us to have a contraption like this. You can buy these already from like specific lab equipment type of stores or whatever. But apart from the fact that my sister already made one that worked, so we know we can just duplicate that, the one we were thinking of getting to just like not have to make so many ourselves was sold out. So here we are. But anyways, this is a new one. A new cut bottle this is the biggest one we have the other one's much skinnier um, and then this was like I believe a barefoot wine bottle so it was inexpensive to buy because we're not well technically my partner drank most of the wine in here so it didn't go to waste but we're not really purchasing it for the alcohol um, if you're lucky enough to find a bottle that's a good size that isn't too expensive and has good quality alcohol in it then you can also use that alcohol to make the tincture but Anyways, yeah, so we want to pick these up because we already had a bunch of the silicone stoppers, but we only had exactly two of these, so we needed at least an additional one. We picked up two extra ones, and um, we're probably going to finish constructing the two percolators by tomorrow, but I just wanted to talk about that a little bit because that clip seemed kind of random. <laughs> I have officially begun my mentorship level two with Erika Buenaflor. Um, and this is regarding Curanderismo for those of you who did not see the videos that I did during, was it 12 Days of Yule? Where I talk about what I'm going to be doing in my practice for, well, now this year, right? I signed up for the first four mentorship classes and it's one a month i just finished viewing the first one last night and i was like equal parts excited intimidated but also validated okay so the way that this works too is prior to the live class online you are encouraged to participate in a forum where Erica prompts us questions and we write our answers and we're also allowed to see everybody else's answers to the same question and a lot of the people that take this mentorship well this is the first time she's doing a level two um, but she's done the level one I'm not exactly sure for how many years but last year when I was doing it was not her first year but typically on this forum you have people from all walks of life like the type of people that take her mentorship are not a one size fits all because curanderismo itself is also not just one thing. It's a combination of many different healing modalities and magical practices, depending on your belief system, right? And this is another reason why I was really attracted to it versus doing um, like traditional Mexican folk magic which typically has components of Christianity and Catholicism. And I don't have anything against anyone who uses any of that type of witchcraft or that works with those belief systems. They're just not mine. And I needed to have a space where I would feel free to do things my way. And this is that space for me right now. I also wanted to feel like I was going to be primed to work with the populations that I want to work with. And this is typically people that are more like me. And what I mean by that is first generation, daughter of immigrants, people who might have struggled with being brought up in what would be 
a Catholic or Christian household and having to break away and then maybe reshape or reclaim not only their religious or their their religious beliefs or their faith, but also their own identity, because this is thing these are things that I can understand and work with, right? So I believe in working with, teaching with, or alongside that which you know first, you know, know thyself and work with that before you start jumping into a bunch of other different things, right? And I feel like I'm on the right path right now, but I do feel like the years of social anxiety and imposter syndrome have kept me from putting myself out there more. And I think that I talk about this quite a lot on this channel, but I'm going to say it again. I'm going to bring it up again. It It's really something that I feel sets me apart when I'm in a room or when I'm in a class of other people who are actively out there, actively putting themselves out there, their services, and seeking to collaborate with others, to work with others, to help others, to facilitate for others. And now I'm at the point where like before I was like, but all these excuses, right? All these excuses, like I'm not ready because of X, Y, Z, blah, 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 blah. I don't feel so much like that anymore, which is the point of doing mentorships, taking classes and workshops, working on your craft, working on yourself, doing the shadow work, the parts work, you know, retrieving soul pieces, like all of that. That's the point of doing all those things is you're also going to build that confidence to be able to take on the things that you want to take on, even if they're not in this realm or sphere, because not everybody wants to work on the spiritual or mental or emotional side of things, right? I mean, it's also physical too, but I'm really feeling that push. And I even had, like, I've done services for close people that are close to me obviously that's going to be more of a comfort than like complete strangers but I also started doing readings for strangers recently just email readings and it made me realize that just doing readings isn't gonna do it for me like I need to be able to do more than that um and this can become a way more like complicated conversation but I guess I just wanted to talk about that and put that out there because the mentorship class was fresh in my mind and I wanted to kind of share some of my thoughts. But yeah, I'm also thinking about making a hair magic video because I mean, look at my hair. It kind of seems like I need to, right? No, not really, but I want to. So I think I'm going to make that video sometime soon. I was just waiting for the opportune moment because I will be including clips of some of the things that I'm talking about in that video. And I already have like a bunch of different ideas of what I want to do. So yeah, thanks for watching. And for those of you who are enjoying the vlogs, may you receive all the blessings in the world.